The concept of Khalafa Caliphate in Islam has undergone significant changes after the period of the Rashidun Caliphs. The first four caliphs who are revered for their close adherence to the principles established by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The transformation began with the rise of the Umayyad dynasty, marking a departure from the ideal Islamic governance to a more autocratic and dynastic rule. This shift laid the groundwork for misconceptions about the role and nature of leadership in Islam. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, foresaw the changes that would occur after the initial period of rightly guided caliphs. In an authentic narration, the Prophet is reported to have said, the caliphate will remain among you for 30 years. Then it will be a monarchy after that. This hadith indicates that after the 30-year period of the Rashidun caliphs, there would be a shift from a true Islamic caliphate to a form of governance, where rulers would hold power not through consultation or the choice of the Muslim community, but through force and hereditary succession. The rise of the Umayyad dynasty marked the beginning of this era, where power was seized and maintained through brute force deviating from the principles of justice and shura that had characterized the rule of the Rashidun. When the Umayyad dynasty took over, they established a system that was starkly different from the egalitarian and consultative governance that Islam advocates. They transformed the caliphate into a monarchy where leadership was passed down through familial lines and the ruler's authority became absolute. This change was in direct contradiction to the teachings of Islam, where leadership is supposed to be a trust, a mana, given to the most qualified and pious chosen through a process of mutual consultation or shura. The Umayyads propagated the idea that the caliph once in power must be obeyed without question regardless of his adherence to Islamic principles. This narrative was reinforced by state-appointed scholars who selectively quoted Ahadith to support the legitimacy of the ruling powers. They emphasized obedience to the ruler in all circumstances, even if the ruler was unjust, thereby creating a false understanding of Islamic governance. Islamic teachings, however, make a clear distinction between a just ruler who adheres to the Sharia, Islamic law, and an unjust ruler who deviates from it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, emphasized that obedience to a ruler is conditional upon his adherence to the teachings of Islam. There is no obedience to the creation in disobedience to the Creator. This hadith clearly indicate that Muslims are not required to obey a ruler who goes against the commands of Allah and his messenger. Instead, they are encouraged to stand up against injustice and oppression, even if it means opposing the ruler. The obedience to a Khalifa is contingent upon his obedience to Allah. When a ruler deviates from the path of Islam, it becomes a duty for Muslims to oppose him. A prime example of standing up against an unjust ruler is the stance of Imam Hussein, the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Contrary to the false narratives propagated by some scholars who were in the service of oppressive rulers, Imam Hussein did not seek power for himself. Instead, he stood against the tyranny and corruption of Yazid, the Umayyad ruler who had violated the principles of justice and piety that are foundational to Islamic leadership. Imam Hussein's stand was not a quest for power, but a refusal to legitimize an unjust and tyrannical regime. He chose martyrdom at Karbala rather than submitting to the authority of a ruler who did not represent the true teachings of Islam. His sacrifice serves as a timeless reminder that the true Islamic Khalafa is one that is established through justice, shura, and adherence to the Sharia, not through coercion and oppression. Over time, ulama in some regions began to align themselves with the ruling powers, often out of fear or for personal gain. They promoted the idea that Muslims must obey the ruler in all circumstances selectively quoting ahadith that support this notion while ignoring others that emphasize the need to stand against injustice. 
This distortion of Islamic teachings has led to a situation where many Muslims are taught to remain passive in the face of oppression under the guise of obedience to authority. This misrepresentation of Islam has had serious consequences, leading to the weakening of the Muslim Ummah and the perpetuation of tyrannical regimes. The consequences of this distorted narrative are evident. In many parts of the Muslim world, oppressive regimes continue to rule with the tacit support of some ulama, who discourage resistance against such rulers. The situation in Palestine is a glaring example. As the Zionist regime continues its brutal occupation and oppression of Palestinians, some scholars and leaders in the Muslim world remain silent, advising only prayer while discouraging any form of active resistance. This silence is not in line with the teachings of Islam, which calls for justice and standing up against oppression. The Quran repeatedly emphasizes the importance of justice and the duty of Muslims to fight against tyranny. O oh, you who have believed, be persistently standing firm in justice, witnesses for Allah, even if it be against yourselves or parents and relatives. Quran chapter 4, ayah 135. And what is the matter with you that you fight not in the cause of Allah and for the oppressed among men, women, and children who say, Our Lord, take us out of this city of oppressive people and appoint for us from yourself a protector and appoint for us from yourself a helper. Chapter 4, Ayah 75. Islam requires active struggle and sacrifice for the sake of justice and truth. It is not a religion of passivity or cowardice, but one that calls for the defense of the weak and the establishment of justice, even if it requires great personal sacrifice. To reclaim the true essence of Islamic governance, it is essential to return to the teachings of the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Muslims must understand that true obedience is to Allah and his messenger, and any ruler who deviates from this path loses the right to unconditional obedience. The ulama have a critical role to play in guiding the ulama towards justice and truth, not by aligning with oppressive rulers, but by standing firm in the face of tyranny as exemplified by Imam Hussein. The Muslim Ummah must reject the distorted narrative that promotes passivity and instead embrace the spirit of active resistance against injustice, as Islam demands. The struggle for justice is an integral part of Islam, and there is no place for cowardice or complacency. The Ummah must rise to the challenges of the time, with the understanding that true victory lies in adhering to the principles of justice even if it requires the ultimate sacrifice.